reason why that false police report, uh, why that report was false, you remember that that is the report used to arrest Datuk Sri Anwar under the IAC at that time. Yeah? So the report says that uh, you are being arrested under the IAC because you are a threat to national security and so on. Whilst we all know and the whole world knows this, that he was actually, when he was actually arrested from his house in Bukit Damansara at about 9 p.m. that same night, he was told by ACP Ko Hong San, I'm arresting you for an offense under the Penal Code, Section 377. He was told that. So the question therefore arose, why at, when the actual arrest report was filed by ACP Ko Hong San, it made no reference to Section 377, but now it was turned into an ISA report. An, ISA arrest report and uh, it is now very clear why that happened it was because after Datu Sri Anwar was arrested and brought back to Bukit Aman he was beaten up by Tansi Rahim No he had a black eye and other injuries and therefore he could not be brought to court if he was arrested under section 377 he would be brought to court to be remanded or also or whatever or charged and that could not happen and that fact to hide the black eye from the public they arrested him under the IAC and created a false police report. The issue why this uh, police report was filed is because we uncovered from uh, the, the evidence given in the Royal Commission of the Black Eye incident that Musa Hassan was present on the 30th floor of Bukit Aman that night, Ghani Patel was present on the 30th floor and they were all part of the group of people who conspired to recreate this false police report. And that is why with Datu Sri Anwar filed the police report on the 20th of February. The reason why we're calling this press conference is to give you a short update on what has happened regarding that police report. Now, we waited for the police to take action. In normal circumstances, the police will immediately interview the complainant and take a statement. Unfortunately, in this case, the police did not record a statement from Datu Sri Anwar. We waited. We decided to be patient. We waited some time and uh, nothing happened. So on the 23rd of April 2009, and we've got copies of the letters for you, you can pass it up. Eh? 23rd of April 2009, uh, my law firm, acting as Datu Sri Anwar's solicitors, wrote to the police. Because now there is section 107A, one of the, of the CPC, which allows a complainant to write officially to the police and ask for a status report, what is happening to the investigation. So we wrote and asked for a status, laporan peniasatan. We didn't get an answer, unfortunately. The police didn't have the courtesy to reply. Our, the, uh, the, the, the inquiry from the uh, from Datu Sri Anwar's solicitors as to what the status of the investigation was. So I took the, the step then of asking the question in Parliament and as to what happened, why, and my question was, kenapa tidak ada sebarang tindakan ke atas laporan polis yang dibuat oleh Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim pada 20 Februari 2009 yang menuduh peguam negara sekarang serta ketua polis negara serta ACP Ko Hong San yang terlibat dalam perbuatan satu laporan polis palsu and so on. The answer we get is a very surprising answer and this is what we want to inform you uh, and I'll read the answer to you which is uh, given on behalf of uh, the Home Minister. Dakwaan bahawa pihak polis tidak mengambil sebarang tindakan ke atas laporan tersebut adalah tidak benar. Untuk maklumat ahli yang berhormat dan Dewan Yang Mulia ini, pihak polis telah merujuk laporan tersebut pada Suruhanjaya Pencegahan Rasuah Malaysia SPRM pada 21 Februari 2009 untuk tindakan selanjutnya. This comes as a complete surprise to us. Because even our letter to the police is not answered. The police have never informed us at any time that this report has been handed over the next day to the MACC for investigation. So, in this press conference we want to raise uh, several questions. One, why in the first place did the police not tell us this immediately after the report was filed? First. Second, after we wrote the letter from the solicitors, 22nd of April, why did the police not reply this letter and tell us that now this is not being handled by us, this is being handled by the MECC? What's the reason to hide this fact from us? And the third, 
question we have now is if it is true that this is was handed over to the SPRM on 21st February today is now 25th of June and up to today we can say for the record Datuk Sri Anwar has not been called to give a statement by the MACC so what is the MACC doing? And it's also shocking to note if this is actually correct the MACC has done nothing on this report.